Business Opportunity and Sustainability in Nigeria, a case study of mobile money. Nigeria, like other developing countries in the world, is faced with numerous challenges, which includes leadership and economic sustainability, among others. Meanwhile, Nigerians tolerance level to ad adaptability to these challenges are high with a lot of innovative solutions as they present themselves over time. With a rapid increase in unemployment rate, Nigerians are stepped into the World Financial Inclusion Project through mobile money and agency banking business led by fintechs, banks, and now mobile network operators, also known as MNOs, thereby generating over 1.3 million jobs from 2012 till date. Point of sales transactions carried out in Nigeria in the first eight months of this year stood at around 4.06 trillion naira in 619.3 million transactions, representing a 45% and 61.8% increase respectively, compare record in corresponding period of 2020. This is based on data obtained from the Nigerian Interbank Settlement System, NIPS. What this has shown us is in the middle of challenges, Nigeria can solve our basic day-to-day -day needs, creating jobs and, and wealth stream while focusing on the betterment of the nation. It is worthy of note that innovations like this will assist to rapidly in reduce the unemployment rate. We just have to look inward. May God bless Nigeria and guide our leaders' rights. <laughs> yeah, mobile morning. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's something that has really evolved since, since 2011 when uh, Nigerian government tapped into the World Bank goals of financially including the uh, hitherto to exclude the population of the country. And uh, the way uh, the goal was set, it uh, was said that by 2020, 80% uh, of the population will have been included. Of course, um, by 2020, 2020 the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, I mean, affected uh, the achievements, but that has also been extended to 2024 now. But if you look at the, the journey so far, uh, you can say, well, Nigeria has not done badly in that regard. Even though there are some things that have not really, I mean, gone well. When you talk about, because there are two aspects to this, when you talk about mobile money and agency banking. Yes, agency banking has thrived, but mobile money has not really evolved as it should. The mobile money aspect will be the one that we allow I mean, the, the ones who, Nigerians who do not have any, um, any identity can still, with their, I mean, SIM, have access to financial services just with their phone numbers. Their phone numbers become their account numbers. And then with that, you can also send money. But one of the major issues that we have is that the interoperability of the platforms has not really made the mobile money to evolve the way it should. And that is where I think the regulators should work on. I believe it has a great future. Uh, financial inclusion is uh, key in this uh, economy. I believe that uh, I come from a background where I have some dealings with microfinance banks and all that. I know that uh, we have a, a future with, with the advent of mobile money uh, you bring in a lot of the population. You bring in more of the population into the economy. The problem really is that technology is low right now in Nigeria. There's a need for government to pay attention to developing internet technology more and more so that these communication companies that are going to provide these services can do a good job. You find today sometimes you go to your you want to interact with your bank, it is difficult. The network is poor. Uh, banks cannot serve you quickly enough. But I think it's, it's a positive development because uh, it is 
for me, an enhancement of the developments that we have seen over the past, say, six years in the communication industry. Uh, communication has now turned to banking. And uh, I think there's a very great future for our country in mm. it. Okay, great. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm actually looking at it from uh, various perspectives. I just use the mobile money and banking agent as a case study. Yeah. Like, you see, what I'm saying in essence is, Business can strive in Nigeria. Like the popular saying where people begin to talk about Jakpa, that they are living. Migration is not a new thing. Mm -hmm. Now we are happy that people who are also migrating, they are skilled people yeah. and they are not constituting nuisance in the countries they are going. Right? That means we should by the next two, three years we should be expecting high rate of international remittance into the country, which is like a, a plus, right? Now, what we are saying now is this. If you look at the uh, Ukraine-Russian war, it has affected the production of wheat, which naturally comes from Ukraine. Now, people will say it is government that is not doing something that makes the cost of bread, flowers go high, not knowing that we are importing, word. which is the war. Now, what we are saying is, these are problems, these are opportunities for us to look inward, to say, can we have land that are suitable to plant this with, this raw material that is used for producing flowers? So I'm just using a case study of banking sector. Before now, we have less than, uh, say, 20,000 ATMs across Nigeria to, to cater for uh, over 40 million bank Nigerians that have bank accounts. We have an ATM. And we have over 100 million bankable adults, meaning that we have less than 50% uh, of them who are actually banked. But these innovations of financial inclusion that people tap into has actually made access to basic finance easy, right? It has uh, taken banking services out of the brick to meet the people, solve the problem of I have to go and do long queue in the bank. And the players, which are the agents who are doing this business, they are making money on a daily basis, right? And that's employment. So unemployment is reducing. So if uh, then people are also, their daily transactions, financial assets, they can easily get it without saying they are traveling far away to do. So a lot of things needs to be done to standardize it, like you said. However, what I'm saying is, if we can impart the same spirit, in every other sector, look inward. Don't wait until the government say we have to do this. Government, CBN has their standard rule with the banking sector. But Fintech came and said, no, we can use technology, decentralize this, create uh, jobs for people. You have tech people getting jobs. You have individuals who are not techy. You know, things create out of Israel. People now came. Now, thank God for this uh, new law that I just uh, signed, startup bill. There is not an act that just consent by, by, by the president. A kudos to that. So what he's trying to tell us now is people can actually think of innovative ideas. We can build Nigeria to suit our tastes. Yeah. We don't need to jack back. Mm -hmm. Because right time you leave your home, you run away and stuff like that. When you come back, all those money that you made, you say, I'm sending money from my boat to go and build out. Why don't you build out there? Mm -hmm. And not send money down here. Because you cannot carry everybody to any country okay, you are going. Okay. While I'm not making a, any case for uh, people that are living in the country, I think, of course, there are business opportunities in Nigeria, countless of them. The issues we have is with the business environment. You talk about access to finance. You talk about security. Most people that are living in this country, some people have said, of course, no one that has left at averagely the country today. And, and, and there are people that can, I mean, live in a standard living in Nigeria, have a standard living in Nigeria. If you look at the cost that it would take them to leave this country, well, what, why are they running away? It is the security. You don't want to be in, in a traffic uh, uh, log jam and be, I mean, looking behind your back. Who, who is there to, to kidnap you? I mean, you, you, you are sleeping and you hear some sound and you want to look at what is happening out there. I mean, all of these things, I mean, 
ac account for why people want to leave this country. It is not because there are no opportunities. It's from where Hussein is really coming from. The point is, um, first of all, I think the private sector in Nigeria is quite small. It needs to be expanded. And what he, he, I think the point he's making is that uh, with the coming of things like this, we can begin to see we widen and expand the private sector with finance. Because without finance is like blood. Mm -hmm. If we can... Uh, allow people to set up small businesses and grow their businesses, even if they are in Kafanchan, even if they are in Sokoto, you don't, need, you don't need to leave your village, for instance, to say mm. bank is not working or you don't have finance. You can take a loan from anywhere, for instance. So I, I, if we build the private, private sector, we have a great future in Nigeria. I think it is small. Uh, government cannot really do everything. Government can do a lot, but we need a big private sector. And with things, innovations like this, I think the future is bright. We are going to get somewhere. Exactly. The private sectors will come when we have the enabling environment. So, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, both of you have actually made a good point. Yes. So, I will wrap up by saying the government has to take the lead. Yes. We are talking about insecurity. Lagos State government started installing cameras every point in Lagos. Everybody is conscious of their movements. So government has to take the lead. So by the time the government takes lead in every sector, I'm sure that everybody will adjust and things will set for the, uh, for the better. So if the citizens are ready to take innovative ideas, government create an enabling environment and take the lead where necessary. I think it will be good. So Olu Ashegun Lekbede is next after the break. Stay with us. <laughs>